Hello, my name is Lisa Canoa from the Limerick Institute of Technology and I'm going to talk to you today about proteins as a component of food. It's safe to say that the one thing you will do today is eat some food. Food is pretty important to all animals. But what is food? What's in food that makes it so important? Specifically, what are proteins and why do we need them? Today, we are going to discuss one of food's macronutrients, proteins. Let's get started. Protein is one of the three macronutrients that make up food, that the body needs in large amounts. They are extremely diverse in biomolecules made up of smaller subunits called amino acids. Proteins make up about 20% of the body and is present in every single cell. Proteins are crucial for the nourishment, renewal, repair, and continuance of life. Let's discuss amino acids some more. Amino acids are very small molecules made up of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. Protein is the only macronutrient that contains nitrogen, which is essential for growth. As you can see in the diagram, every amino acid consists of a central carbon molecule with a hydrogen molecule, an amine group, a carboxylic acid group, and finally, R, the variable group. Amino acids differ depending on which specific side chain is bonded to that central carbon. Peptides, polypeptides, and proteins are all polymers of amino acids, which means they are like long chains of amino acid sequences that fold into a specific shape. There are 20 different amino acid building blocks commonly found in plants and animals. A typical protein is made up of 300 or more amino acids and the number and sequence of amino acids is unique to each protein. This chain of amino acids will fold into a specific shape or structure, which will determine the function of the protein. Proteins are often classified according to their structure. These are primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary. Amino acids are classified as either essential or non-essential. Essential amino acids, as the name suggests, cannot be produced by the body and therefore must be found in the diet. Whereas non-essential amino acids are produced in the body and do not need to come from our diet. Why do we need protein in our diets? Simply put, protein is essential for life. Proteins grow, maintain, repair, and replace the tissues in our bodies. So our muscles, our organs, and our immune system are mostly made up of proteins. Some examples of proteins' functions in our bodies include enzymes. Enzymes are proteins that aid in the thousands of biochemical reactions that take place within and outside of your cells, such as digestion, blood clotting, and muscle contraction. Proteins and polypeptides make up most of your body's hormones, such as insulin, which regulates your blood sugar levels, and human growth hormone, which stimulates the growth of various tissues, including bones. They provide structure Proteins such as keratin, collagen, and elastin form your skin, your nails, your hair, as well as connective tissues in your body. They balance fluids. Albumin and globulin are two proteins found in the blood that help maintain your body's fluids by attracting and retaining water. Proteins help form immunoglobulins or antibodies to help fight infections. Transport proteins carry substances throughout your bloodstream into cells, out of cells, 
and within the cells, substances such as cholesterol, vitamins and oxygen. And lastly, it is a secondary source of energy. Protein can serve as a valuable energy source, but only in extreme measures, such as in times of fasting, exhaustive exercise, or inadequate food intake. If necessary, your body breaks down skeletal muscle so that the amino acids can provide energy. The bottom line is we need protein to survive. Hopefully by now you're asking yourself, how much protein should I be eating? Our body's proteins are continually being repaired and replaced throughout our lives. This requires a continuous supply of amino acids. So we must ingest dietary protein to keep up with the demand of our bodies. Adequate intake is particularly important during periods of rapid growth or increased demand, such as childhood, adolescence, pregnancy, breastfeeding, and also for those who exercise regularly. The recommendations vary based on your lifestyle, but a general figure for a sedentary adult is 0.8 grams of protein per one kilogram of body weight per day. So for example, if you weigh 60 kilograms, then you should be consuming 4.8 grams of protein per day. So what foods should we eat to get all this protein? What is the best source of dietary protein? But there has been much debate over which source of protein is better. And the answer is, it depends on the whole nutrient package. Adult protein sources are similar to the proteins found in our own bodies. They are considered complete proteins because they contain all 20 amino acids. Whereas plant protein sources, such as beans, nuts and lentils are considered to be incomplete proteins because they lack one or more of the essential amino acids. Does this mean that we should be eating animal derived protein sources only? It's not as simple as complete or incomplete proteins. Let's take a look at some healthy protein sources. Protein-rich, animal-based foods commonly contain other nutrients, such as high amounts of the B vitamins, vitamin E, iron, magnesium, and zinc. Seafood, another high source of healthy proteins, also contains healthy fats. And plant sources of protein contain a high amount of fiber, as well as other vitamins and minerals. However, some of these animal-based protein-rich foods have an unhealthy amount of saturated fats and cholesterol. When choosing your dietary sources of protein, take note of the other nutrients and also the non-nutrients, such as cholesterol, dyes and preservatives, in order to make good selections that will benefit your health. For instance, a hamburger made from 80% lean meat contains 22 grams of protein, 5.7 grams of saturated fat, and 77 milligrams of cholesterol. A burger made from 95% lean meat contains 22 grams of protein also, but has 2.3 grams of saturated fat and 60 milligrams of cholesterol. Whereas a cup of boiled soybeans contains 29 grams of protein, 2.2 grams of saturated fat, and zero cholesterol. So what have we learned today? Proteins are large polymers 
made up of long chains of amino acids. Essential amino acids cannot be manufactured by our bodies and must be ingested in the diet. Proteins are needed in the body for many different functions, such as repair and growth, to function as enzymes, hormones, and for structure. Different stages of our lives require more or less protein, depending on our individual needs. But the general recommendation is 0.8 grams of protein per one kilogram of body weight per day. Animal and plant foods are both considered good sources of protein. Animal sources are said to be complete because they have the full quota of the essential amino acids, whereas plant sources are said to be incomplete as they do not have the full quota of essential amino acids. This does not mean that meat is the better source of protein. The whole nutrient package must be considered. Many types of meat are high in saturated fats and cholesterols, but also they are a good source of fat soluble vitamins and minerals. Plant sources, while deficient in some essential amino acids, are a good source of fiber and other nutrients, as well as being low in saturated fats and cholesterol. Therefore, it is vital to ensure a balanced diet is followed to ensure all macronutrients are obtained from healthy foods. Thank you very much for listening to me. And if you'd like some more information, please go to the CLIL website.